One of the major benefits of an open source project, certainly to consumers, is that all of the files are made available online, which means any individual or company can come along and use those files and make a new product out of them. And that's kind of what's happened here. As you can see, these two printers in front of me do look rather similar. This original Prusa i3 Mark III S by Prusa Research is basically the original design from Prusa. And this one on my left is the Caribou Mark III S320. This is very much based on the Prusa, but with a large number of modifications. But just because it's modified and changed and really quite different in nearly every single way, does that necessarily make it better? Well, there's only one way to find out. Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Now, as you've probably guessed, today we're going to be comparing these two machines. This, the Caribou Mark III S320, which I built recently on a series of live streams provided very kindly by one of my subscribers, Martin Stevenson, whose machine this is, and I will be shipping it to him after this is all over. And then this one on my right, this is my three-year-old Mark III S from Prusa Research, but with a few modifications. So it's not a genuine original, well, it is mostly, but there are modifications and we'll get into those in just a bit. So let's remove this printer from the equation at the moment and start taking a look at a few of the details on the original Prusa. So I've moved the Caribou machine out of the way for now. Let's take a closer look at the original Prusa i3 Mark III S. Now, the machine I actually bought about three years ago now, I think it was November 2017, so coming up to November 2020, this was actually the Mark III printer, not the Mark III S. It took me a couple of years and then I purchased the upgrade parts for the Mark III S. And then soon after that, I did some more bespoke upgrade, which is the bare upgrade to the full X axis. This bare upgrade for the Prusa makes a number of changes in terms of geometry to the X end parts, making them a lot thicker, a lot more rigid, as well as having a much better belt adjustment using a screw at the end. The extruder assembly itself makes a number of changes in terms of the relationship geometrically between some of the parts, as well as differences in the fan duct and other smaller details. Other than that, the one other difference is this stepper motor on the front. This is actually a caribou motor rather than the original Prusa one. The reason being the Prusa one, which I have here, three years old, the bearing has worn out. So as I was trying to rotate it, in fact, I noticed it during printing, it just stopped randomly. I thought maybe the hot ends clogged or something like that, but it wasn't. The stepper motor should turn freely when you try and rotate it. I mean, just without being plugged into anything, it should turn really quite easily. It was okay in one direction, but the other way it just jammed. So there was definitely something not right. When I took it apart, I could quite visibly see that one of the bearings would just wiggle. Like it was definitely something damaged in it. So that would have resulted in some pretty poor performance over some period of time. But for now, that's been replaced by this other stepper motor. It's very similar in terms of overall geometry, it's still a NEMA 17, but this is a kind of silent type from LDO Motors through uh, Caribou. But for all intents and purposes, again, it's a stepper motor. It's gonna be providing roughly the same sort of performance. It's just a little bit colder. Apart from that, pretty much everything you see here is the original stuff. So the heated bed, the screen, a lot of those printed parts, the control board, is all the original Prusa design. So the Caribou Mark III S320 then. So cool because the 320 refers to the extended Z height up to 320 millimeters. Fairly self-explanatory. From a distance, these printers do look really quite similar. There's a lot of configuration that from a distance does look the same, but let me point out some of the key differences. Firstly, the entire frame is made of 30 by 30 millimeter aluminum extrusion. Next, we have all these printed parts in this bright luminous green. It looks quite nice, I think. And they are printed much thicker, more densely, and therefore stronger and more rigid than the original Prusa parts. They are much heavier. It's over a kilogram of filament that goes into printing all of the parts for one printer. The next part that adds to the rigidity of this machine is the, uh, the steel rods. Now the original diameter on the Prusa is eight millimeters, whereas all of the rods, both Z and both Y and both X are 10 millimeters on this design making them much stiffer and more rigid than the original. The last major difference between this and the original Prusa design is the extruder. Caribou can come with a number of different hot ends, E3D as well as Mosquito, but there's also a Bontec extruder instead of the standard Prusa design. This gives your full three to one gear ratio, allows for a smaller stepper motor, which allows for lighter overall extruder design. 
The standard E3 V6 is utilized here, so there's not necessarily a significant increase in flow rate or anything like that, but you should maintain very similar performance between the two. As a slightly more subjective point, purely on the fact that it's quite difficult to test in a short period of time, a lot of the cable runs on this machine are much better protected than the original Prusa. It has this very nice durable flex kind of cable management system, and the management at each end looks like it should strain relief a little bit better than the original design. But that's kind of, as I said, quite subjective because it's very difficult to test without printing for thousands of hours. Everything else is basically the same. We've got the same control board as the original Prusa, pretty much the same screen. It can come with OLED options, but performance wise, it's gonna be the same. Still SD card, similar sort of power supply. This is a 320 watt Meanwell power unit. Very similar fans for both the park cooling and hot end cooling, although they do have an increased flow output, which means potentially better cooling. And of course the heated bed is the same sort of 24 volts PCP design with magnets on the bottom for using a spring steel sheet. The last thing that's a little bit different between the two printers during my testing is the spring steel sheet. This might not make a lot of sense to most people how I've chosen this, but this is how it is. The original Prusa has used a Biltac spring steel sheet with original Biltac surface for printing PLA. Whilst for PLA on this machine, I use the original Prusa smooth PEI. For PETG on both printers, I've used the texture PEI from Prusa Research. The reason I didn't use the sheet on that came with the Caribou is that I wanted to ship that straight to Martin without me like having toyed with it or messed up the sheet surface or getting any grease on it or anything like that. So that's going straight up to him and I've just used whatever I had available as I've only got one week to do this. I wanted to print the, both things at the same time. I don't have two of most sheets. So anyway, one thing leads to another. That's the sheer surfaces that I've used for testing. For running the tests themselves, I've run exactly the same G-code on both machines because they both run Mark 3S firmware. We can use the Mark 3S Prusa slicer profile for both machines. So again, identical G-code. I've also tried to use identical filament where I can. In some cases, I've used the same spool and switched it between prints, but for the larger Deadpool prints and a couple of the others, you'll see a green Mystic Green PLA, which is the Prusa PLA printed on the Caribou, and then a Mystic Brown, which is a PLA from Prusa which I've printed on the Prusa. So very, very similar filaments used, if not exactly the same. Before we get into the test results, don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd like to see other videos on printer testing like this one. Now it's time to take a look at the prints that I've done. We've got a number of them on the left here and a number on the right. This lot is all from the Prusa, I know you can't really see them, and there's also another lot that you can't see on the Caribou. Some are PETG, some are PLA, some are aesthetic, some are like dimensional for calibration. So let's start taking a look at them. The first one I want to look at is this. So this is my bridging test, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters, takes about 30 minutes, and we've used exactly the same spool of filament for both of these tests. This is out of PETG, Royal Blue from Oosnest. Now, the way this test works is it basically is obviously printed flat like this, and it's bridging in all four directions. So we can measure the thickness of where it's bridging, and we can pair that to what it's supposed to be in the CAD design or in the slicer, and we can find out how much different it is to what it should be. And that gives us a quality of the bridge. So overall, the average error for the Prusa was 0.97 millimeters, while the average error for the Caribou printer was 0.6 millimeters. So that makes the Caribou about 34% less than the Prusa. Now that one millimeter does sound quite significant, but I have measured it at the absolute maximum on these 50 mil bridge tests, but it does give us a really good indication of the relative performance between the Caribou and the Prusa. You would think that this one metric can kind of determine your cooling performance, but in actual fact, that's not necessarily super correct. So let's take a look next at the overhang test, which indicates how far or how steep we can do an overhang angle. Again, this is done in all four directions. So there's an overhang in X plus and minus and Y plus and minus. And then we can just feel with our fingers or kind of look, make an observation on whether the layers are lined up and uniform or whether they're kind of falling apart and not lined up properly. So in nearly every single direction on both printers, we achieved 60 degrees apart from in the X plus direction on the Caribou where for some reason it dropped to around, well, it dropped down to the next level, which is 50 degrees as the 60 degrees seem to have a little bit of error on it. 
seem to be falling away a little bit. Not totally sure why. So this certainly suggests that the cooling on both printers is more than adequate. Both are very good. Uh, the Caribou may be very slightly less so. If you took a look, if you take a look kind of subjectively, especially at the 80 degrees overhang where it is very, very steep, well, basically impossible, you do notice that there's certainly more drooping on the Caribou versus the original Prusa design with the bare x-axis upgrade. So bear in mind, this is not really the original Prusa cooling method. This is the bare upgrade cooling method. The next one I want to take a look at is SKU. So both of these printers being based on the Prusa firmware have SKU calibration, which means it can measure four points on the bed. And from that, it can determine how skewed it is and correct with it when doing a print. So I would expect both the Prusa design, or both the Prusa part of my skewness test and the one printed on the Caribou to be basically perfect. Zero degree skew should be ideal. In reality, it's not quite perfect. The Prusa is 0.08 degrees out, while the Caribou is 0.065. So again, both are basically well within anything you're going to really be able to notice measurably on a print at less than 0.1 degree. It really is very, very accurate on both printers. And you can certainly see that that skew calibration is having a significant effect on the overall performance. I think trying to assemble to that level of precision would be really quite difficult. The skewness test itself is again printed out of the same Oosnest PETG in the royal blue color, same spool for both prints. While the Caribou is obviously getting a slightly better performance here than the Prusa, I think they're kind of within the margin of error of this test. Both I would say are actually basically the same. The next test I want to take a look at is the stringing test. So this is a small square that I've designed with a number of very small pillars or posts on it. They're all round and it causes stringing between the two pieces. So just looking at these subjectively, I don't think there's really much great I can do in terms of an objective and measurable way to measure stringing. But certainly from appearance, the, the Prusa design, this brown one, does have quite a bit less stringing than this one, the green one printed on the Caribou. The last calibration print I want to take a look at is what I call my double dimension test, which is because there's two dimensions on each axis. So you have a larger one at 80 millimeters and a smaller one at 40. And having two dimensions on each of those two axes give you basically a way to measure the kind of scaling rather than just a single dimension, which could then measure extrusion ratio or dimensional accuracy, but not both at the same time. The Prusa is showing uh, dimensional accuracy within 0.08% on the X and within 0.2% on Y. So both reasonably good. The Y could be with maybe a little bit of improvement. And I think that maybe could just be that the belt on the Y axis could do with a little bit of additional tension. For the Caribou measured part, we have the X coming in at minus 0.3%, while the Y is at 0. Point, minus, sorry, minus 0.05. So the Y tension certainly very good there, while the X is maybe a little bit not quite as good as it could be. Next, we're onto our more aesthetic or functional tests. I mean, those two things are quite different. But we've got this uh, Prusa clamp, which is the one that they show in all the pictures for their PETG Prusament. This is printed out of the red, I uh, can't remember what they call it, like a galaxy red, it's like the sparkly red PETG. So I'm just gonna see how easy these are to assemble. These are basically just pulled straight off the printer with nothing really done to them. I've pulled away some of the stringy pits, stringing bits that were really obvious and just easy to brush away, but no like sanding or anything like that. This is quite tight. But it seems to be assembling okay. Can we push the top on? I did hear some slightly suspicious cracking sounds, but it seems like it's not actually cracked, so that's good. The screw itself does seem quite tight. I'm not sure if that's down to the design of the clamp or to the precision of the print. We shall find out, I guess, when we do the other one. So there you go, that's clamped all the way down. It does seem to work. That's good. So that's the one off the Prusa. Now we can try assembling the one off the Caribou. So again, identical material here, exactly the same spool, but printed at slightly different times. This does seem to be assembling a little bit easier actually. Quite a lot easier actually. 
which suggests to me that the there was maybe a slight over extrusion on the Prusa, although that's not necessarily what was indicated in the results of the previous test. Getting a bit tighter now. Slight downside of PETG having a clamp as it has a slight tendency to be this kind of stick slip where it becomes very sticky and then when it slips it slips. You get that kind of tackiness. So I mean both have assembled absolutely fine. I'm pretty happy with the performance for PETG on both machines. Both prints do look exceptionally good and both rather functional. The last print we have to take a look at is the Deadpool print. So this is out of Prusament PLA on both machines. This one is the Mystic Brown and this one is Mystic Green. So the aesthetic qualities might look a little bit different in each of the two colors, but largely speaking, we should see fairly equivalent performance on both of these prints. Looking at them overall, by looking down the maybe the body at the front, the performance does look very consistent all the way down. The lines are definitely very precise. There does seem to be some slight issue with alignment on the caribou machine with some slight artifacting, but it's very, very minor. The only real measurable performance difference on these two prints is around the arm areas where one might typically use some support material for the very steep overhang, but in this case, it can be done without. Notably, the cooling performance on the caribou seems to have caused some curling upwards, which I did manage to picture during the printing. And I think that's reflected in the final kind of outcome. It does look better overall, but it does also look a little bit rough. Whereas the Prusa one maybe increased the reliability of printing because it didn't cool too fast, so it didn't curl up, but that has resulted in some of the lines hanging down a bit. So, I mean, this would probably look better at the end, and I think it does, but this probably has slightly better reliability during printing because you don't have any chance of the print curling up and hitting the pinder probe or nozzle, which can knock prints off the bed. Fortunately, because the base on these is quite large, we had two successful prints, one for each printer. There's quite a lot to test on a 3D printer. There are loads of different components and having quite a few differences between the Prusa with the bare axis upgrade and the Caribou means that these tests, while obviously useful for me to compare these two printers, are not necessarily entirely representative of a completely original Prusa, but are representative of the original Caribou. So the question is, is the Caribou gonna be worth that extra money? Is it gonna be worth it to you? I think there are a couple of things that you would need to take into account. Obviously the prints that we did today are largely comparable. There are differences. In some cases, the Caribou was better. In some cases, the Prusa was better. On these aesthetic prints, it's very difficult for me to tell the differences between them, although there are some, obviously, improvements on that overhang. The thing that I think you would need to take into account is the kind of longevity of these two machines. The Caribou uses very high quality components from Mizumi, who are known globally for their high performance linear motion components. I'm not exactly sure of the source of the Prusa components, although they have lasted me okay for these three years, but I have, of course, replaced the bearings as I didn't do very much maintenance on it. But you can probably get away with not replacing them if you do regular maintenance, which is definitely recommended from me and also from Prusa Research. The question is, is it gonna be worth it for you? I think that's gonna entirely depend on your use case. If you're doing this as a production environment and you are printing 24 seven, then the additional money spent on the Caribou could be very useful in terms of ensuring that you don't have to do as much maintenance over time as you've got these higher quality components. But for everyday users, that are not printing 24 seven, maybe doing the occasional print, but do still want high quality. The Prusa deal still does have excellent performance. And of course the bare axis upgrade is kind of free to do. You have to print the parts, but everything else you can kind of source very easily. So overall, of course, I'm going to leave the decision up to you, whether it's worth it for what you want to be doing. The Caribou is certainly more expensive, but has the quality and flexibility that reflects that. The Prusa is a well-known brand and you really still can't go wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Leave your thoughts on the prints and what you spotted and maybe the quality differences between them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.